I, s I remember one night spending the whole night with about six boats stooging around just dodging the weather it was too rough to go in and we're waiting around the daylight to go in and oh we had a hell night that was a shocker um, but um, as daylight was breaking there was a couple of, I heard a couple of guys talking and they were saying things like you know it's shit I hope that bar's good in the morning and the other guy saying I don't care what it's like I'm going in there I'm not staying out here and I, and I could see where he's coming from I could understand but that's just not an option you can't do that I mean if it's no good it's no good you just have to accept that. If you've got doubt about the bar it would be normal practice to call someone up on shore to get advice on the bar because no, it doesn't matter how many years you've been fishing, you still it still pays to get advice for a bad bar. Um, if I'm approaching the bar and I know that it is going to be a bit dodgy or rough, I'll, I'll always take advice from ashore. Um, whether I follow that advice or not is up to me, but I'll always listen. I will, I will ring up and get advice from the tip head um, on, on the flow in the river, on the set across the front, how heavy they are, the lulls between the brakes, etc. But I don't really expect someone to instruct me from the tip head, mainly because I'm on the boat and they're not. Actually getting people to say do or don't is not, you know, it, it's really up to the skipper on the day. It is the skipper's call at the end to decide to come in. Like most skippers that call up to get advice, ask someone on shore that they trust to have a look. Um, most of those tips down there, like on the breakwaters and that there, you'll find somebody sitting there just about 24 hours a day. I think it's a bit of a circus down there. They all come down to see who's going to ask up, but there's always somebody there. Uh, you can always radio back to other jokers that are around the bar and they'll tell you what's going on. Generally we're talking on the radio, sort of wondering what the bar's like and, mm. and what we're prepared for. And um, everyone's very talkative until you hit the point when you cross the bar and, the, and then the information tends to dry up because the, the guy who's crossed the bar, the, the pressure's totally off him, he's relaxed, all he's got to do now is tie up the boat, go and have a beer, relax, you know, it's just a, great, a lot of relief sort of once you're in and you forget about mm -hmm guys that are out there still coming and um, yeah it's one thing that struck me that it would be good for in those situations to get more feedback from the guys who'd, who'd come across. Three brothers fishing out of here all named all walkers and they're quite funny because all their voices have a very similar ring to them. Uh, we have the South Head signal station we quite often contact even there he'll give you the conditions he can see the from the hill whether the um, main channel is breaking and if it's breaking I as a rule don't bother with it and I always would go by Evan's decision on the hill if he say it, says it's no good well then we've got another night at sea uh, it's safer to stay at sea in those circumstances okay it might be a wee bit uncomfortable but you're alive and that's the main thing a dead fisherman doesn't get to spend the money for his pay. Oh, big gust of 61 here on uh, the 1st and uh, another one uh, on the 14th. Oh well, it's uh, par for the course this time of year so you're getting the good stuff coming from now on. Yeah, yeah it'd be like, nice to get rid of that, um, those clouds and have a bit of blue sky as well. Getting all the available information and taking advice about conditions on the bar from responsible people like coast watchers and harbour masters or experienced fellow skippers is just one way of helping you make the right decision about coming in or staying out. It also helps if you recognize and can deal with the pressures on you when you're making the decision. And you can further reduce the risk by taking all those precautions we talked about. Ensuring the watertight boundaries of your boat. Lashing everything down. Really important is to retain the ability to learn from your mistakes, to gain wisdom from experience. On the Manicare I've been lucky. I've only had one, one incident in my whole career where I've 
being scared and I know I've made the wrong decision. But I committed myself too far, got too close and that's a thing that comes with experience. Um, I wasn't too happy with myself having made a mistake. Uh, I think everybody makes mistakes and it's, it's getting past those mistakes and carrying on with your life and thinking, I won't do that again. You know, learn from your mistakes is the biggest thing. Well, f for me, that was my big mistake, was I had picked a nice big wave and shot down it and thought, this is fun, you know, but when you get a big wave and you run down it, you reach a point where your, your speed, you're surfing down it and, you, and your rudder's not working off your propeller, you, know, you haven't got the same manoeuvrability and you actually lose steerage and that's what I did. And, and that was the main lesson I learned there was to back off and, and retain control. And I should have slowed right down and let those waves go through. It was my own fault. I should never have had the power on it. As soon as the boat started to move off, I should have pulled the revs off it, and I just didn't do it. Um, but going home, I suppose, young at the time, but yeah, it taught me a lesson pretty quickly. A boat is a thing that you have to feel through the water. You can't um, drive it through the water. Let it work its own way through the water. You drive it through the water, you'll come to grief. Knowing your, your vessel and um, how it handles the bar is something you have to learn about that vessel with time, I suppose. It's not just something that someone can say, okay, that boat's good on the bar with a certain amount of fish on it. It's something that you've got to get familiar with yourself. You can't just assume that it's all right because someone else said, said so. As when I, when I was younger, those first crossings, you tend to be a bit more gung-ho, you know, take a bit more risk to get it, bring home the big freight, stay a bit longer, push the weather a little bit, and um, as time goes by, I, I figure there's um, there's no reason to do that, you know, it's it's that's how I can minimise the risk with bars, is, is to not be so greedy, you know, just... Um, oh, it's things like, if it is starting to pack up, I'll fish my way close to the bar, so when it comes time to make the decision, I can be in there quickly. That's where experience counts, I think. I mean, you can, you can drive up the dotted line every time and, and, um, and think you're doing pretty good, but if you do, sometimes you just get it wrong. Sometimes the conditions are against you and everything's against you and, and you end up in the wrong place, and that's when <laughs> sometimes you just have to cross your fingers and try and get into the right place. And um, yeah, that, that's that's experience to get you out of it, sort of. So, however experienced you are, and even if you do do everything right, things can still turn to custard. But sometimes it's as if you have to be ready to cope with events you wouldn't even dream of. What I didn't do, what I lacked the imagination to believe that. Um, the gantry, because the vessel is aluminium, that perhaps the aluminium welding isn't as strong as general steel welding, and we we'd had like everything was tied up, the hatches were all lashed down, everything was everything was super cold near as I could tell, but we had left our bridle wires out, had them lashed into the gantry and lashed in along the bulwarks, but when the trawl door went, it took the bracket with it, it took all the wires with it as well by winding those wires up on the trawl winches, which we always do now, um, that whole situation could have been avoided. But uh, on that particular day, we had them lashed in, we thought that was enough, and obviously it wasn't. Uh, a couple of years back, a guy headed out, didn't bother to wake the crew, you know, give them a, an extra hour's sleep on the way out, climbed up on the wheelhouse, swung his poles out, slipped and ended up in the tide, and the boat, ended up um, running down the tip head, chewed up the propeller, the crew leapt out of bed to see what was going on and luckily that, that nothing happened there, nothing worse than the chewed up propeller and it was a calm day but uh, little things like that you know, just um, suddenly everything's totally out of control. Well the batteries, all our batteries at that time were in the wheelhouse and they just got flooded which short circuited them all out, then salt water in the batteries as well, and you've got the, um, the old gas getting at you from them. The wheelhouse was actually chocker with 
liquid gas. <laughs>